This is really meant to be a birds of a feather session, was the, the, the kind of the, the scope. We really want this to be an interactive um, discussion. This is really about how to get the Linux community more involved in, in leading Beagle and have Beagle serving the Linux community more, right? So this, um, less of us, more of you. Um, but um, we will give you a little bit of an introduction to um, to BeagleBoard if you're not really that familiar with us. Um, we exist exclusively as a nonprofit organization. Um, we um, seek to advance the, the state of embedded systems development utilizing open source, right? And not just open source software, but open source hardware. Um, you know, we want to see things go as open, as deep, as is reasonable, right? So as, as is possible, right? All the way through the, the silicon level, right? Um, but where we can't have that, at least we can have really good documentation and ready supply of processors um, that we, that we um, utilize. Um, and we open it up as absolutely much as um, we can because we want, this, this is about preserving knowledge and, and making our jobs easier um, to make things. Um, this is the leadership of, of BeagleBoard.org. You're looking at uh, three of the, the board members. I'm uh, Jason Kreidner. Um, I was a founder of BeagleBoard.org and um, yeah, uh, uh, Kathy, you want to say something quick about yourself? Yeah. My <clears throat> Hello? Microphone. There we go. Yeah, so I've had background in embedded Linux and sort of wireless router stacks. Sorry, I've been at the booth, lost my voice. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> more recently, you know, microcontrollers. And to me, those domains have always been kind of separate. So joining the board here with BeagleBoard is kind of fun. I can play in both, both areas at one time. And if you haven't checked out Microblocks, microblocks.fun, that's on the microcontroller side. Um, so I'm very big on the openness of software and hardware to, to improve education and access to technology and get more people engaged in technology, especially girls and women. Hi, I'm Drew. Uh, um, work for Bailey Bray uh, and also another board member of the Beagle Board Dark Foundation. So two things I really love are electronics and Linux. Um, so when single board computers started, I was really excited about that. Um, I would, before Beagle, I was working with some proprietary ones, um, and I got frustrated that you could get maybe a schematic, but not a full schematic. You couldn't get the board layout, uh, the processor you couldn't buy. Um, and then I met Jason at a maker fair many years ago, and he was telling me that the, the Beagle bone is completely open source, so open source hardware. So you can get the schematic, you can get the PCB, you can get the PCB layout. All the parts are available in quantity one from distributors, so anyone that wants to can build any of the Beagle designs, modify them. One of the ones I liked was someone make it, made a derivative board that uh, was a logic anal analyzer, I think, called the Beagle Logic, which was really fun. So, um, yeah, I was playing around with other boards, and I, I discovered that the Beagle was much more open, and that's kind of what hooked me into the, the thing. So, um, And then going to the current day, I'm very excited about um, the potential of even going beyond the board level being open source. There's a lot of developments now in open source silicon design, so in the future we might even get into that. Oh, and risk five. <laughs> I, I, I did remember to put a, a, a quick slide in just for have us talk about risk five um, here, but I did I did I forgot to put GSOC. Um, so the the guy that did the the board uh, Beagle Logic, um, um, Abhishek Kumar, um, um, now works for for Google, but he was a Google Summer of Code uh, intern with with BeagleBoard, and I see some other folks in here um, that participated um, as interns in, in Beagle's mentorship in uh, Google Summer of Code, um, and that's part of one of my favorite times of year, which is now. Um, we're about three weeks into coding now um, um, with the the Google Summer of Code um, interns. Um, and to me, that's a great focus. That's where a lot of our energy goes, is really trying to, to mentor um, students and, and bring up more people. So we have a very much a, a, a mixed focus of, like for, for us, I think education is education of everybody, right? So continuing education, young education, um, you know, 
university, a graduate level education, right? Um, and it's, it's very much about improving access, right? So, um, and, and enabling people to um, deal with all the stuff that there is to learn about dealing with embedded systems. Um, so the, 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 there's a couple board members on here. I think a lot of people that are around BeagleBoard and Linux would be very familiar with Robert Nelson. He is the, um, the distrib distribution maintainer. He works on the Debian distribution for the, the BeagleBoards um, and also pulls in, I see a bunch of the TI folks here, pulls in all their kernel patches um, to make sure that you know, they're applied um, as well. So we, we do a kind of a mix of chasing mainline and supporting vendor kernel um, stuff, right? So we try to make sure that, um, if he, you know, that we're, we're, we're constantly switching back and forth to running both mainline and um, vendor kernels. Um, and Mark Yoder, um, right now I guess he's the only full-time professor um, on the board, but he does a, um, he has a course on embedded Linux um, at Rose Holman, and he has written um, some from free online books um, that are on docs.beagleboard.org, and he's working on another one this summer, um, and he utilizes those and a bunch of other materials, some up on the eLinux wiki um, and other locations, but he, he, he shares all of his teaching materials um, so that people that want to teach um, embedded Linux can. Anything else about the leadership? Any questions about the the board or, or, or CEO or um, how how BeagleBoard is run? Like I said it's 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 a it is a five hundred one c three organization that um, um, supported primarily through um, royalties but also through donations. Which is a nonprofit in the U.S. Yeah, oh yeah, that's it may not translate. Yeah, so it's um a, a, yeah, tax exempt nonprofit. Um, so if you made a donation, um, if you were in the U.S., um, you'd actually get to not pay tax on that, that, that money. Um, so what makes Beagle special? Um, we're not just about making cheap computers. Um, we want to make computers that you can make into other things, right? Ultimately, things that don't look like a computer, they just look like an appliance that just does the job and doesn't make technology get in your way or um, run a platform um, that serves some other interest, right? We want to give as much power to the individual as possible, um, which also means not um, preventing them from going to, to, to business, right? So, you know, so actually self making and selling things. Um, and so you know, our community um, in general is very entrepreneurial um, um, and um, domain expert, um, you know, heavily, heavily um, expert um, in, in building embedded systems. Um, and a lot of what's kept BeagleBoard um, really exciting for years where we haven't maybe done a lot of updates to the, the, the main CPU cores that we're utilizing is that we mix both Linux and uh, microcontrollers and, and ultra low latency microcontrollers in one platform and we can do lots of new amazing things with that like um, the CNC mills and, and lighting and um, um, audio like low, ultra low latency audio um, the types of things that you want to do in an embedded system where you're doing real-time control um, hard real-time control and you know all the fun networking and amazing things that come from Linux um, yeah um, and it, it, you know we've we've kind of been everywhere um, you know when a Raspberry Pi goes into space you know it's big news um, when a beagle bone goes into space it's Tuesday <laughs> um, there's like actually satellite networks and um, built out of there's people doing space operating systems and people building their their CubeSat frameworks off of off of off of beagles um, yeah. Um, so, lots of people have written books. Um, most of these on 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 BeagleBone Black. Um, but I think that with some of the new stuff that we're coming out with, we're going to see a lot of new interest and new um, new people getting started with uh, Beagle Play and Beagle Connect Freedom 
and a lot more materials coming out on those. Um, and of course, there's been just hundreds of um, add-on board systems that have come out, mostly uh, open source, not all, but, um, a, but you know, a large a chunk of them, people creating more open source hardware. Um, and you know, something I'm especially proud of is that the, the Linux Foundation um, has historically used Beagles as their, their platform for teaching um, embedded Linux, and I know um, some other folks in, you know, here have, have worked on teaching materials. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's one there, another book author at the back of the room, um, uh, and, and teaches courses with Beagle Bones. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, even the Linux Foundation in themselves uh, do that as well. Um, and of course, um, you know, there's people create projects all the time and share them. This is, a, a, I think, a kind of a fun project that came out of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Um, and I just kind of solved this on a National Geographic blurb. Um, and I, this is something that actually has happened to me fairly often. And when I see a Beagle Moonblock, I notice it immediately. Um, um, but six seconds into a National Geographic special, there's like, boom, there's a Beagle Bone in their Mars rover prototype. Um, they never talk about it, they never show it again, um, but they do drive it under the Arctic ice um, to simulate environment um, as, of, um, on Mars. Um, and then people, like, you know, go to school, they learn all about, um, you know, how to build embedded systems, Beagle, and they come out and they, they graduate, they do things like this, like um, make the world's first cheeseburger robot um, with 14 Beagle Bone Blacks. Um, and um, so the, the, these guys um, tell me they, they would never allow a PLC um, to be utilized in any of their designs, right? They, this, is, this is the model that they use as Beagle Bones. Um, and so there's just a lot of different, the, the, the base, the user base um, for BeagleBone is really large and a lot of people doing a lot of different things. Um, even building um, in products, even ones that, that require safety certification. Um, so Dremel um, is actually puts BeagleBones into their laser cutters. Um, and you know, it may not seem like such a, a huge number given some of the other things, but we've sold over six million boards. Um, and so all the, the um, you know, BeagleBoard doesn't get the profits, but there's a, a royalty um, based on the utilization of the logo for people that manufacture it with the logo, right? If you wanted to make it on your own, you can do that, and a lot of people do. Um, a huge portion of the designs that come across TI's desk actually start with the beagle bone as a design, and then they modify it. Um, and, and that's where a lot of people build their custom systems, but if they just want to buy one off the board, just don't blame me, right? You've got the design, you've got all the, the, the data sheet materials, don't blame me if it doesn't work. You had everything you needed to test it and validate it in your use. Um, but we've done some new things. We're not just stuck on ARM Cortex-A8 anymore, okay? That's, that's something that I think um, a lot of the Im embedded Linux um, community doesn't know is that the Beagle has moved past Cortex A8. 64-bit. 64-bit. Um, so this is this was the first 64-bit uh, Beagle board, the BeagleBone AI 64, um, and which has a an, an eight tops neural net accelerator um, and finally good um, support for those accelerators in Python. Um, and the accelerators themselves um, are like, with, there's, there was GCC support for the C6 DSP that's used for, for part of it. Um, and the C7 does not have GCC support, but there is a tool chain. We actually ship a ARM hosted tool chain for the C7 um, a processor that's running most of the, the neural net processing on the board, right? So the thing about Beagle is we tried to ship the boards with all the tools you need to develop for the board on the board, um, right? So if you want to program the C7 DSP, all the tools you need to program the C7 DSP are actually shipped on the board. Um, you plug it in, you log in, 
and you can begin programming the C7 DSP. Maybe a little bit of a learning curve, um, but it's possible. Um, and most of the source um, for those are released from TI. I'm not aware if there's any li limitations in terms of what's uh, um, opened up um, source-wise for the, the neural net accelerators. My understanding is it's, uh, they, they provide all of the source for that. Um, cause, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so um, if you want to get dive deep, um, you know, yes, um, the, the technical reference manual is over 10,000 pages, um, but better to have it. That's good, that's good. <laughs> um, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, right? So the information is there. We love Texas Instruments for this because they know how to, to make the chips available and um, provide the documentation, including the erratas, um, to all the developers. Um, this is a pretty powerful board. It's a dual core Cortex A72 um, running at two gigahertz, right? Um, um, other numbers in here. Um, it's got PCI Express um, on here. You've got USB 3. Um, and I think that we ended up selling this one for about $180. Um, uh, there's lots of peer use. There's actually 12. PRU cores in this. Um, explain yeah, explain PRU. So we talked about being able to support um, hard real time, um, and, and a lot of as as a lot of what's made Beagle super interesting is the ability to do um, ultra low latency hard real time. Uh, the PRU is a 32-bit um, RISC um, core. Um, it is proprietary to Texas Instruments, but there is uh, GCC support for it, um, and um, there's um, LLVM backend work in progress um, during this this year's um, Google Summer of Code. Um, so it's a, a, it, a it is a 32-bit risk, but it's fairly magical in that there are registers in those cores that are directly mapped to I/O pins. So R30 and R31 in um, and some of those PRUs, right, when you, you get, some of them are staged, but, but the, um, the ones that have I.O. pin access are directly register mapped. That means you can sit there and XOR a pin, um, and there's zero pipeline depth, right, or one, single stage pipeline depth, right? So you can do every cycle, you can toggle the clock, right? So um, on the BeagleBomb Black, running at um, uh, 200 megahertz PRUs, you can generate 100 megahertz clock in a CPU. <laughs> and you can sample at those rates, right? That's how they built a, we built a logic analyzer, um, the, the, the Beagle logic, right? It was just, it used the PRUs to go do that, um, the sampling of the IO pins, right? So, um, and because this is within one system, you also have access to that DDR memory, right? So um, what a lot of people do is they do the, the, the high throughput stuff um, with the beefy A72s, A8s, and A53s, and the, and the, the family. Um, and then they use the peer use to bit bang that out on the IO. And that's, that allows doing things like the, um, you know, um, it's, so you can do 3D printers, but it's, you can't spit plastic out as fast as you can control the motors. So where this really gets more interesting is when you start um, doing CNC mills and things that can actually move much, much faster. Um, because you can do all the complicated path planning for five axis <laughs> mills um, and, and, and keep up um, with the, 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 the motion path and all those huge amount of pulses and, and, and feedback loops that you have to do to drive the motors. Um, so did I explain PRUs enough? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, is there, is there any questions about PRUs? This really should be more interactive. There are open source libraries um, for, for motor, motor control. So um, there's the machine kit project 
Um, so most of the, the people that leverage the peer use, it's usually a small handful of people that actually do the programming on the peer use, but then they release a firmware sets that allow that, that support to scale out to a, to a lot of other people, right? So if you look at uh, folks like Bella, um, th they've done this ultra low latency audio synthesizer um, and they're using the peer use um, to be able to take the, the synthesis samples and respond really quickly to the codecs um, so that the, the things, they have the really, really short buffers. If you look at um, doing things like this, the CNC mills, you know, machine kit um, has the code in it already and you can configure the geometries in, in, in Python. Um, so you don't have to spend any time doing the, the PRU code because the PRU code's already written um, in a way that, that allows you to um, hook up numbers of stepper motors and, and coordinate them however your geometries are. Um, so like where you, you get the you essentially fill up the memory with patterns of pulses, and then the peer use pull those those pulse patterns out and drive them out to the motors. Um, lighting as well. Um, there's actually really popular in Christmas light displays. The the, the, the if, if if you played with W the the, the WS twenty eight twelves, those are great, um, but those are at least an order of magnitude more expensive. Um, than the type of LEDs that you can use for, like that are used for, for, for jumbotrons, right? So um, you can replace a $3,000 FPGA controller for driving these, par these parallel um, panels with a $50 BeagleBone Black, right? Because of your ability to process the high throughput stuff in, with the, the Cortex-A uh, class processor and then the peer used to be able to deal, deal with the, 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 the bit banging. And yeah, this has got a lot of peer use. Um, this is um, newer. This is um, our, our latest uh, um, uh, board. I think this is the last one. You know, was about one hundred and eighty dollars. This is under a hundred, right? So this is sixty-four bit uh, quad core A fifty-three, um, and you'll notice the size of the heatsink. There isn't one. No heat sink, right? This thing runs nice and cool, quad core A53. It's really a sweet spot, right? The, um, I, the processors themselves, uh, it's on this side of the board. Um, I, I know that you can look at the, um, there, there are variants of this that you can look at on TI's website that are under $5, right? Um, and, I'm not sure exactly which, maybe a, thou, a thousand quantity, right? There, there, there's, it's a very, it's, this is finally the replacement for the AM3 that we've been waiting on for a long time, and it's real, right? So we're no longer stuck um, in the Cortex A8 32-bit ARM world, right? We are um, fully into 64-bit um, world. Um, so we've got a little bit more memory on here. We've got the, the, the two, two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of flash. Um, and we've, you know, the, the processor is obviously tremendously faster. This one has a two, two PRUs on it. Um, and it's also got an M4. And so the M4 is um, accessible for programming um, as well. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and I think we've done some really interesting things with the connectivity on here. Um, there's under here is a CC1352 um, P7 microcontroller. This also has an M4, so the main processor SOC has an M4 in it, um, but there's an M4 out here in the, the wireless processor. Um, and it's also got an M0 in it for, it's essentially a software defined radio. Um, and you can do uh, 2.4 gigahertz stuff, so you can do stuff like Zigbee and Blue, um, Bluetooth Low Energy um, with that. Um, but you've also got sub gigahertz, right? So you can talk to devices a, a kilometer away um, and you'll get you know, a reasonable amount of, of data throughput, right? Um, so some people talk much, much further than that, um, but that's kind of how, we, how we've tested it as, the, as the, um, you know, uh, kilometer um, in open air. 
Um, what about the GPU? Oh my, <laughs> that is a good one. So um, I, thank you, Nishant. Um, so we now have, so it's still an imagination power VR GPU, but something's different. Um, we've, we've, TI has made an agreement with imagination to release an open source GPU driver. So um, both the kernel and user space, no user space binary blobs. Um, it's still, <laughs> yeah, um, finally. <laughs> so um, this, this is leading the way with uh, OpenVR's um, open source uh, GPU stack um, and on Linux. So um, it's on the release candidate three right now. They're still working on um, a lot of the compliance, but that work is moving on. And uh, I think in a lot of ways it's usable and functional now, right? But um, I think for getting Mesa and all, and all of the Vulkan compliance stuff, there's still a fair bit of, there's a lot of work left to do, um, but it's real now. Um, so, yay. Um, yeah, so I, I, I tend, I'm so used to just pretending we don't have a GPU, yeah. um, <laughs> because I, the last thing I want to do is talk about one where I have to use closed source binary blobs in, in, in Linux, and um, no more. Um, Since we're talking multimedia, I see you have a CSA2 connector for, I think, the first time on a Beagle board, or was that also No, the actually, back? there's two CSI connections on uh, the Beagle Bond AI64. So um, an AI64 has some, some reasonably powerful um, image signal processors or ISPs um, on it. So it's definitely something to note uh, that Beagle Play and the AM62 do not have integrated ISPs. Okay. So I think like utilizing something like um, lib camera and using maybe either GPU, um, well, that makes to me it makes the, probably the most sense. You know, like actually doing GPU acceleration uh, to perform the, the the image signal processing functions um, would make a ton of sense, right? So it's got the the f a four lane CSI, um, but uh, no ISP. Okay, and the CS2, CSI2 connector in the Play, is that compatible with Raspberry Pi cameras, or is that another It's one? the 22 pin that you'll have on like okay. the Pi Zero. Um, the smaller one. And so it's the four lane version, um, right? So it, it's, this, it's, it's the same connector footprint, right? But I think they, they seem to be focusing more on the, the lower pin count two lane version. The two lane one. Um, right, but uh, we didn't want to do that, and you can get. There are people that make the ribbon cable, so you can get to the the, the two lane version uh, if you want to use the Pi cameras. Okay. Um, so let me. But also software add, work so to be done, right? So. So let, let me also ask, what is the ISP support current status for the uh, the bigger board? No, not the, uh, the, AI, the 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 the, the AI sixty four. Exactly. Um, there are ISP loads for a number of fixed cameras. Um, but they did not, the, the, they're blobs. They're binary blobs that you run on the M4s that, that work with the accelerators in that subsystem. Um, they're not, oh please, oh you're gonna tell me they're gonna change that? Please tell me you're gonna change that. I see TI folks raising their hands. Yeah, so we have an intern actively working on lip camera support and an open V4L2 driver for the ISP, so it will work for Beagle Pony i64 as well. So using the accelerator hardware, so like the, yeah. nice. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> oh. Chris? Hi, I got a couple of camera, oh, a couple of cameras, no, a couple of questions uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the streaming chat. So the first one, the question is, hang on, I'll put my glasses on. Um, yeah, Would, can you say something about the um, the Beagle Five, the Risk Five version? I, we, um, we do guy have. Guy says, uh, when will it be available? I've been on the list for over a year. Uh, yeah, so we we did um, um, cancel the the Beagle Five Starlight project. Um, it was very unfortunate. It it, it was 
Um, I think um, it was a lot of personal pain. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into that project and a, and a lot of passion to get that. But the passion for Risk V is not gone from Beagle at all. Um, so I would say you might not have to wait that long for something new um, from Beagle around Risk V. Um, that's probably a, a, as much detail as I can give. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish the, the thing is, is we do care deeply about uh, the, the Risk V community, and we will be doing things to help um, advance development of, um, of, of the Risk Risk V ecosystem. Okay, I just have one more quick question uh, again from from the chat. Um, so Alex points out that there are t there are still two binary blobs on the AM six two XX. Uh, and he goes on to list them, but uh, so the question is: Is there a plan to get rid of those binary blobs as well? Uh, if you're the, the R5, there's a set of, um, of of code that is involved in um, the the clock trees, um, and I think the the statements from from TI is that we won't be able to get rid of that binary blob, but um, it's not running on the A53s, yeah. right? It's not so. It's and and you know. Once that we are still able to lo to load the bootloader, um, so we, you can you can boot and run some things without it. I don't know, Shanti, you want to speak any better about the what's on there? From it's not like a hundred percent dependent to have that blob. Yeah, so there are two binary blobs. One is the security enclave binary blob, which is signed, and the R5 binary blob that does the device management function. Uh, I, if I recollect right, the source is actually available. Uh, in one of the SDK versions, but it's a pain in the ass to build it up. Sorry, my friends. Um, the system uh, is abstracted away for the device management function to work. Uh, expanding that functionality with additional, um, I don't know, additional software should be possible, but you want to be careful. It's not a general purpose pro processor. It's one of the core systems that's running here. So I don't know if that helps. I was trying to get into the connectivity, but I'm, I, uh, I'm okay well, with uh, questions. Mm, I think I've seen, time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I've seen uh, maybe a, a single pair Ethernet in the, in the Beagle Play. Yes. Could you give more details about, uh, about it, uh, especially yeah. if it, uh, it's uh, MaxEC capable of doing offloading or, or PTP capable? Uh, there's no, um, the, the Phi itself doesn't have any clock recovery, I think you, but it, you can hook it up to the, the, the peer you so that you can try to do your own kind of uh, uh, timing, um, but you'd probably have to look, uh, you'd have to have a little, a little bit of external circuitry in order to do timing recovery. Um, the, um, I, I think that's a super interesting thing to do on, on that, but it is a, a tin based T1L. Um, right, so the long, long range. Um, we do provide a, a non-standards-based power over data line of five volts at 250 milliamps um, without the, the PD discovery. Um, so there, you just have a software mechanism to essentially turn that power on the lines, mostly so you could hook up microcontrollers to it over fairly short distances um, and, and and, and drive communication to like a, a, a string of, of, of microcontrollers, right? That's the that's the kind of the vision there, um, and more to, to kind of experiment with power over data line, right? If you want to run the real long distances, you're going to want 24 volts, and you're going to want the the, the power to discovery. Um, well, but while Jason speaks about the technology, I just want to provide some ideas. People have phone lines. Uh, phone cabling in their houses that isn't being used anymore, you could use it to wire up you know, microcontrollers or some other sensors in your home. And there was a group here from uh, Test Automation. They have these adapters that you could use to use that power over data line to, to run test information in and out of the board and set up big test board farm automations out of the stuff. So there's a lot of interesting examples we've heard about. And, it's, and the cabling is extremely forgiving. You know, 
better to be twisted, better to be shielded, but if it's not, it's still going to work. Um, it's very, it's a very nice, robust technology that I recommend people get some time playing with. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and then there's traditional gigabit Ethernet, um, but this sub gigahertz wireless um, is one that we're doing a lot more around um, immediately. I think we we have more plans to do things around the single pair Ethernet um, as in, in an accessory uh, capacity. Um, but right now we have Beagle Connect Freedom um, for, for kind of wireless peripheral expansion. Um, so it's a, a way we've, we've gotten really, um, at least me, me personally, has gotten really hooked on this microbus thing. Um, it's a nice little standard connector that's freely licensable, like the, the logos, if you just follow the standard. And it's got SPI, I2C, UART, PWM, analog, and power, um, and a nice regular connection. Um, and we've worked with um, uh, Microelectronica um, to have an identifier. And I know, I think Vaishnav's in here, he's actually submitted two RFCs uh, for the microbus um, to turn into a bus in the Linux kernel, right? So an actual probable bus um, so that on the here, you've got the microbus um, directly on it. It probes the one wire EEPROM. It reads a manifest um, so that you can automatically load the drivers um, without a device tree overlay, right? So there's just one overlay, uh, one device tree entry to describe the bus and put the bus in there, but it's because it's a probable bus, you don't need to have a device tree entry um, in order to, to discover the boards. We have uh, manifest files for that for 150 boards um, so far out of the roughly 1,500 um, that, that Microelectronica makes. Um, and um, they're in the process of putting IDs on all of their boards. Um, so um, I think that's a very promising thing to help um, move along the IAO subsystem and all the, um, all the sensor stuff inside the kernel. Um, but we also have this concept of, of remoting that interface. We've actually taken Graybus um, from, from Project Aura and enabled that to work across, and that's, that's part of what my, the, my talk following this will be about, um, uh, so that you can, you can actually get that microbus and auto discovery and everything to work um, remotely over there so for making sensor networks. Um, and we, so this is the, the board as it ships right in the enclosure. <laughs> There's a slide to remember to talk about risk five, check. Um, talked about risk microbus. We didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about A. We did mention that we have an eight tops accelerator on the AI64 supported by the Python libraries. That's NeoDLR, um, Onyx, and um, TensorFlow Lite um, in an open stack. Briefly touched on gray bus. Yeah, I think we kind of kind of hit stuff. Um, we get a lot of interactive discussion, um, but we'd like to carry that discussion forward um, on and, and actually get some guidance from the the the, the Linux community. Um, we've started a Discord recently. Maybe that's a little more accessible if people don't like IRC. IRC is still a great way to get in, in touch with um, a number of us. Um, you know, to just chat online. Um, but we, you know, we've started a, a, a podcast. We're happy to have other people come and talk on that. We want to do blog. We want to talk about what you're doing. Um, and we want to try to find ways to make ourselves more accessible um, so that you can get inputs on what we're, what we're doing in the future. I think we have two minutes, so if oh, there's okay. quick questions. Uh, is there any questions? Uh, yeah. What do they want? You can tell us now what you want. <laughs> uh, you said that the uh, sub gigahertz radio on the Beagle Play is sort of like a software defined radio. So, is there support to build our own protocols with that radio? It support. So, the TI Simple Link SDK um, does have the ability to kind of you you can. Um, you mix frequencies and modulation standards and change the, the way that the, that radio is performing. I'm not, uh, it's, I'm speaking a little out of school, um, but it does and it supports, 
they've, they've got software loads for Amazon Sidewalk and um, Ysun and a number of different uh, of these things, but I, I don't necessarily like using that code too much. Whatever gets integrated into Zephyr um, and exposed through Zephyr is something I'm far more comfortable with, but I think those are the more knowledgeable might work on um, expanding those features out. And you can, there are some ways to do some patches on the M0 that's actually kind of you know, driving the radio modulation. Um, but I'm, you know, right now, as far as I know, they just publish entry points into the ROM code, um, not a full stack. I think of time for one more quick question. Or suggestion. Or suggestion. Any beat uh, replacement for the pocket beagle to do 64 bit? Ooh. That sounds like a really great idea. Awesome. <laughs> it come, you can, yeah, feel free to come talk to us at the booth. Um, we're booth number one right at the coffee break as, as you go um, towards where the, the, the paid uh, bar is, right? So um, yeah, go that way. <laughs> Out here and to the left, all the way to the left. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your time.